My name is Jillian Martin. I'm a senior healthcare consultant at CLA and an MDS master teacher through the American Association of Nursing Assessment Coordinators. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the CMS 1135 waiver and how that impacts Medicare A access and reimbursement in a skilled nursing facility. When the president declares a disaster or emergency under the National Emergencies Act, the Secretary of Health and Human Services is authorized to waive or modify certain requirements for Medicare, Medicaid, and the Children's Health Insurance Program. Today, we will be talking about the waiver as it applies to Medicare only. Back in March, the 1135 blanket waiver was enacted. It impacts all 17 provider types a little differently. And even for skilled nursing facilities, it covers a lot of material that we will not be discussing today. Just keep in mind that today we are discussing Medicare Part A only, so not Medicare Advantage and not Medicaid, though some of the requirements will overlap. The waiver applies to all patients who require skilled care. They don't specifically have to have a COVID-19 diagnosis. We will review the waiver as it applies to the three-day prior hospitalization, some MDS updates for completion and transmission, cohorting and isolation requirements, and guidance on UBO4 billing. The waiver for the three-day prior hospitalization will allow skilled nursing facilities to put certain patients on Medicare A without requiring the three midnight inpatient stay. It is a temporary emergency coverage of skilled nursing facility services without a qualifying stay. It was put in place to keep hospital beds open and to preserve PPE or personal protective equipment for the acutely ill and to prevent disruption to care services in a skilled nursing facility. So what this means is that residents do not need a hospital stay to access their Medicare A benefits in the skilled nursing facility. However, it is not a blanket waiver for everyone to access Medicare. So who can access that Medicare benefit? We can take new admissions from the hospital with or without the three-day qualifying stay. So hospital observation stays are acceptable in this instance. We can take direct admissions from the emergency room. We can take direct admissions from the community, so either from their own home or from a doctor's office. And for our existing inpatient residents, it will allow us to treat them in place. We can transfer them from a non-certified to a certified bed, and we can put them on Medicare without having to send them to the hospital. In addition, it changed some access to the benefit period. So for certain beneficiaries who exhausted their benefit period, meaning they used all 100 days of their Medicare coverage in a nursing home, and they are either in or were prevented from starting their 60-day period of wellness, they can now access that Medicare benefit again, meaning they will get a new 100 days of Medicare coverage. This only applies to beneficiaries who have been delayed or prevented from commencing or completing their 60-day period of wellness. It does not apply if a patient has a continued skilled need that is unrelated to de the declared emergency. Medicare guidelines must still be followed. While the waiver allows for some change to regulation, there are still some Medicare guidelines that are not part of the waiver. So part one of that, we have to make sure that the beneficiary actually has traditional Medicare Part A. We need to make sure we have a physician or a physician extender order for the patient to access that skilled care. We have to make sure we have a daily skilled need or condition for which we are providing care. A diagnosis alone is not sufficient. We also need to make sure we have daily skilled documentation so what are we doing for that resident for their Medicare Part A benefit? And we also have to make sure that we follow guidelines for Medicare certifications. So we have to remember we are skilling the condition, not the diagnosis. And how do we know how long we can keep them on Medicare? So the typical guideline for that is either until they don't have COVID-19 any longer, until they no longer require skilled services, Knowing when to cut them from Medicare requires direction from an MD or other provider type 
or when the risk for serious complications or death is reasonably passed. Another part of the waiver is about MDS timing. The waiver is not related to setting of the date. So setting the assessment reference date for the MDS has not been waived. Setting the assessment reference date is the basis for payment for the Medicare Part A program. Completion and transmission timelines are part of the waiver. Late completion and transmission are regulatory requirements or regulatory issues and are not related to payment. Setting of the date, meaning picking the correct assessment reference date in the acceptable assessment reference date window, which is day one through day eight of the Medicare Part A stay, is what we still have to comply with. If we can't complete or transmit our MDSs timely due to the declared emergency, that is what is part of the waiver. In addition, CMS has put out information regarding cohorting guidelines. So prior to the COVID-19 emergency, CMS and the Centers for Disease Control had indicated that residents with infectious disease processes or communicable diseases had to be isolated and not cohorted with another roommate or multiple roommates. With the declared emergency, they lifted that restriction so they can be cohorted, meaning two people with the same or similar infections can now be roomed together. This was due to the issue regarding spacing and the ability to isolate in a nursing home. However, in a moment, we will discuss how this impacts Medicare and reimbursement for the MDS. And in addition, we have some adjustments that have to be made to the UBO4 or the Medicare bill that we send to our Medicare administrative contractors. When it is time to bill for our residents, we need to use the condition code DR, which stands for disaster related and it is used to identify claims that are or may be impacted by a national or regional disaster. DR is a condition code that will allow the bill, the UBO4, to bypass the edits from the Medicare administrative contractor for the three-day stay and for the 60-day period of waivers. While CMS has waived the cohorting restrictions, we must still consider the impact of this on MDS coding and subsequent reimbursement. CMS lifted the restriction because of the high number of infection and the probability of limited space in each skilled nursing facility. They did not, however, change the MDS coding requirement when it comes to isolation and quarantine. The coding of isolation or quarantine on the MDS puts the resident into a higher nursing category under PDPM or the patient driven payment model. The coding would be in one of the three extensive nursing services categories, which is the highest payment group for nursing. But in order to get credit for that and to code it on the MDS, CMS has indicated that we must still meet the coding requirements as outlined in the MDS 3.0 users manual. The four requirements are number one, the resident must have an active infection that is highly contagious, acquired by physical contact, airborne or droplet transmission. Number two, the precautions we put in place must be over and above standard precautions. Whatever the transmission is of the contagion are the precautions we have to put in place. Number three, the resident must be in a room alone because of the active infection. They cannot have a roommate, even if that roommate has the same infection. And requirement number four, the resident must remain in their room for the love for their entirety of their care, meaning they cannot leave their room for meals, activities, or other services. Everything must be provided to them in their rooms. So these four coding requirements must continue to be met in order for facilities to code isolation and quarantine on the MDS for that increased level of reimbursements. However, the cohorting restriction guideline that was lifted is related to the residents being able to be placed in a room together without coding it on the MDS. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching.